What's going on guys? Nick Foy here from AskNickFoy.com. Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about how to set up your e-commerce store uh, on either one of the third-party platforms that is built specifically for hosting your products and delivering your digitals you know, to the customer or we're going to talk about how to host it on your own website but I'm going to get into some of the cons of hosting it on a subdomain and why you should keep everything on your primary root domain. Don't let your store go down onto the subdomain. So I'm going to share tips and tricks that I learned from hosting it on a subdomain, why I don't like it and why I would redo it if I could on my main root domain. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into this video today over here on my computer screen and I'm going to start showing you some live examples of you know how to build out your e-commerce store and what to avoid you know as far as the subdomain goes. Alright guys so here I am on one of my niche websites golfpracticeguides.com so this is my primary root domain meaning it's you know the primary domain here golfpracticeguides.com and then there's things like subdomains so I've got a subdomain for this website called shop.golfpracticeguides.com. Now when I click this, my web hosting server guy set it up so that it redirects it to look like it's all one website. So it'll redirect to golfpracticeguides.com slash shop. Now one issue that causes is a long page load time, what you're seeing here, because it's got to redirect. So that's one issue that I have with using like a subdomain. Um, trying to kind of make my website look like it's all in one so that people think it's you know it all goes together rather than looking like a separate website but it causes me extra load time as you just saw because it has to redirect uh, so that's one thing but most importantly the biggest complaint I have between the two of these and why I would recommend just keeping your store on your main website domain so you know if I would have set up e WooCommerce and you know a shopping cart and membership page and all that on this website the big reason for that is analytics and tracking so when we go into my analytics what happens is you know I have to set up analytics for both of these because they're treated like two separate websites so I've got you know one Google Analytics code pasted in for this website and then one for this website so then in Google Analytics it's a pain because I kind of have to hop back and forth between the two now one of the nice things about it is it's separate so I can see okay all my traffic coming to my blog just reading blog articles that's kinda nice and then I have separate traffic I can look at you know who's looking at my store pages who's making it to my checkout page my cart page and etc so that is kinda nice that it kinda separates the two like that but the negative side of it is a lot of my traffic that comes from the blog over here so they click on these articles and they start reading them and then I've linked to my different practice plans and different products in the article itself as soon as they click on that link and it takes them over here to the shop store it, it just counts that as direct traffic in Google Analytics so when I'm looking at my traffic it'll just say direct you know sent 600 visitors um, you know this today or whatever so then I'm sitting there confused like well what does direct mean like where do they actually come from so that's one of my complaints I have with setting it up on a subdomain if you kept everything on the same primary domain then if they just hop over from let's say your blog article to one of your products it would tr it would track that in Google Analytics and you could see you know okay you had 30 people came to the product page from this blog article and 50 people came from this blog article and you'd be able to better track you know which of these articles on your website are sending the most traffic to your different product pages you'd get a better feel of where they're coming from so another example if we take this out another level deeper let's say I have this blog article on Pinterest so it's going viral let's say on Pinterest I'm getting a thousand people a month clicking through to this article from Pinterest reading it out of those thousand people I would be able to see in my analytics that you know this article got a thousand website visitors that month and they all came from Pinterest I'd be able to track that part but then I wouldn't be able to see how many of those people from Pinterest ended up over on my store page so then on my store page if somebody checks out it's just gonna say that the traffic source was direct and I wouldn't actually know that it came from Pinterest because originally they came to this website from Pinterest then they clicked through to the product page taking them over here to my shop and they ended up buying a product 
And it, sometimes Google Analytics doesn't necessarily track that that person came all the way back from Pinterest. It just tracks that, oh, that person came from your golf practice guide's website, which it calls direct. So what I've had to do recently, and it was very tedious, it took almost a whole entire day. I think I spent over eight hours doing it. I had to go through every single blog article and update every link within these articles. And what I did is I used this Google URL builder. So if you do currently have a subdomain, you can use this strategy. So this campaign URL builder, it's a free tool. It opens up this page here. And then I could paste in like my shop. Here's a here's one that it auto saved from the other day. So http slash golfpracticeguys.com slash shop slash product category practice plan. So this URL takes them over to my, my store page and it's gonna show them some different products, right? So that's the URL I want to take them to. Now I want to be able to track that they came from my primary domain golfpracticeguides.com. So what I had to do was put in campaign source golfpracticeguides.com campaign medium blog and then if you want to get specific i could have gone into every single article and put the article name if i'm trying to track which articles are sending the most traffic to these different product pages but i didn't want to get that tedious instead i just made it to where it shows that it came from my blog so then you scroll down here they generate this campaign url that you can copy and it's got tracking code in it and then i had to go back here into my primary website to the blog article paste in that link into the article. So now when anybody clicks that link and it takes them over here to my store, it'll tell me, okay, they came from golfpracticeguides.com from a blog article. And then I also set up ones for the menu bar up here. So if we hover over one here, down in the left-hand part of the screen, you can see that code that just slid across. And it says, you know, it's got that little code down there that's the Google uh the Google URL builder that I set up. So it actually says menu bar instead. So instead of writing blog here for medium, I wrote menu bar. That way if anybody ever clicks one of these menu items and it takes them over to my store, I know it came as a click from the menu instead of coming from an actual blog article itself. And then lastly, I set up different custom links for my home page here. So if they click on any of these buttons here on my home page that also takes them over to my store, then I'm going to be able to track, okay, they came from the home page. So now I'll know if they came from the home page, if they came from my menu, or if they came from a blog article itself. And then I've set up campaign tracking URLs for my email. So as soon as they opt into, let's say, this email form right down here. So I've got an email form here on my home page. Anytime they opt into any email form on my website, whether it's here on the home page or it's at the bottom of a blog article or it's a pop up that happens. They automatically, after subscribing, get redirected you know, to my store. And that redirect link actually has code in it as well that tells me, okay, this person came from an email opt-in. So that way I can keep dibs on my traffic, whether it came from you know, the menu bar, the home page, my email opt-in forms, or whether they came from a blog article. So now I'm able to track all my traffic coming over here to my store from my website and know where they came from. And then additionally, my, my store page here, of course, if they come direct from Pinterest, Facebook, or Instagram, direct to my store with no stops in between, I'm able to track that as well. But if they happen to go from Pinterest to you know my golf website and then came over here to my store, I wouldn't necessarily be able to track they started at Pinterest. I would only be able to see that they came from my golf practice guides blog. So that's my big complaint why I'm recommending not doing a subdomain like this. It is nice to have like two separate websites so I can custom design this website to lay out and look like I want it to. It's different than, you know, the design look of this website, but there's got to be a way to, you know, have this page since it's just a custom looking page. There's a way to, you know, build these pages out over here on your primary domain so that you can get them over here as well. So the big thing though is just the traffic tracking where people are coming from in order to understand you know, you know, where I need to focus more. Do I need to write more blog articles? Do I need to focus on social media more? Google, SEO, search engine rankings. You know, where is my traffic coming from that's actually converting into customers? Because it's all about you know, tracking conversions, seeing how much money you're spending on ads, things like that to figure out how to optimize your content marketing strategy so that you can keep growing your traffic to your store, to your products, and that'll convert then into more customers. So that would be my tips for you today. I just wanted to make this kind of quick video on my frustrations with having a subdomain. Other than that, the 
the couple pros with having a subdomain again I can custom design this website how I want. I can pick a whole new website theme if I want a specific store or shop theme that I want just for this website and then I can keep a separate theme for your main website. That's one nice thing about it. And then two, you can have custom menus. So like in this case, this menu is completely different. It's different products here than, than my menu out here on my main website. So that's another another thing and then two if my main website ever goes down or has an issue at least my store is still up and running so I could still get sales um, so that's another thing if, if you have them separated and something happens to one website at least the other website's still live so that you're still making sales and stuff so those are some things you know pros and cons we kind of covered on you know the idea of whether you're going to set up a subdomain for your store a lot of people like to set up one called you know store dot whatever their url is dot com in my case i did shop dot golf practice guides dot com but then i had a redirect set up so that it just redirects everything to golf practice guides dot com slash shop so again that adds some extra page load time which can hurt you know people staying on your website because if your pages take too long to load um, but overall i would just recommend keeping everything on a primary domain name Another thing I could have done was instead of using a subdomain, I could have just built out a whole new website as a primary domain. So I could have called it, you know, shopgolfproducts.com or something like that, just a whole new URL name. And then I could set up Google Analytics on that website. So it's like its own website. It's not connected to golfpracticeguys.com as a subdomain. It's just its own private website. And when you have Google Analytics set up, any traffic that comes from golfpracticeguys.com over to that second website, it's going to track that under the referral tab in your Google Analytics. And it's going to show what website domains have sent you traffic. So I'd be able to see, you know, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram.com golfpracticeguides.com, any other websites out there that are sending me traffic, I'd be able to track you know, all these different domain names that are sending me traffic. But in the case of using it as a subdomain, all it does is it classifies it as direct traffic and then you have no clue of knowing which domains it actually came from because it just says direct. So thanks so much for watching this video. Those are my tips today on why I would avoid using a subdomain just set it up as its own you know, separate website primary domain or keep everything on your main blog website domain name. That way you know, you're able to track traffic because as you grow, you're gonna wanna have access to that detailed analytics, those detailed data sets that really tell you, you know, which traffic source is actually converting best. Like in my case, I know most of my customers actually come from Google search. And then I do have a lot of customers come from Pinterest and occasionally I get customers from Instagram and Facebook. But I know this because I've been able to track analytics in my, you know, keep everything kind of on tabs by looking at it on a month to month basis, setting up different marketing systems to be able to track my traffic, what they're doing on my website. But the one downfall I've had, like I've mentioned, is, uh, you know, a lot of the traffic that comes from blog articles, it just says, you know, that they came from direct traffic, whereas other times I'll, I'll know it came from Google because it'll actually say it came from Google in the analytics platform that I use called Clicky. And then I also use Google Analytics. So try these tips out when you're building out your store and maybe it'll save you some headaches and you'll be able to have a smoother go at tracking what your website visitors are up to so that you can keep improving your content marketing strategy. Thanks so much for watching this video. Before you go, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button to give it a thumbs up and help us out here. And if you like this content, we've got more on our channel. Just check out our playlist and see which video topics we cover that are most interesting to you. Lastly, if you'd like to take one of our premium courses, we get a lot of people asking if we have a course for blogging. So if you just go to asknickfoy.teachable.com, so it is a subdomain of Teachable. That's my personal subdomain I set up. So I actually host courses for my Ask Nick Foy brand over on a third party website instead of hosting them on my personal domain website. Again, I can track traffic coming to Teachable from asknickfoy.com like we talked about today. So that's another thing you could do is use like a third party uh, service like Teachable to host your products. So I actually do have these courses here, two $49 courses at the time of this video. If the prices have changed now that you're watching the video, you know, I do apologize, but right now they're $49. Profitable blogger, profitable Pinterest traffic. These will teach you how to how to build a, a successful blog that makes money, how to build a successful Pinterest account that drives traffic to your blog and that can you know make you money as well. 
because again, I, some of my revenue that comes in every month is coming from Pinterest. So check these two out. And then if you want to learn email marketing, how to make money selling through email, you can check out this convert kit made simple course. It's only $29. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video upload. Take care.